welcome Ryan Leaf. Thank you very much. It is such a pleasure to be with you in person. Some of you haven't seen each other in years. You weren't sure if you were going to fist bump, hug, elbow. You're not sure, but I'm glad, I'm glad that we all have, have figured it out together. Uh, we are going to be talking about how to be the CEO of your own development. And what I want to do is I want to equip us to have the tools that we need to take our life and our career to the next level. So here's a couple of things you need to know about me from the get-go. Number one, I am married. This is a picture of my wife. Now I know what you're thinking. How in the world did he get her? <laughs> Let me explain. When my wife and I were dating, I overheard her tell a friend she thought it would be cool to get engaged and married on the same day. I had absolutely no idea what that meant, so I guessed. And over the course of two years, I began planning our wedding behind her back. I was in 11 weddings before I was in my own. Okay, apparently I was a really good friend in college because people kept asking me to be in their wedding. <laughs> Nevertheless, at every reception, I would say, hey, babe, what'd you like? And, and so I would just take notes for a couple of years. And then about three weeks before the wedding, she has no idea it's coming and I got to figure out the cake. Somebody says, Ryan, don't mess up the cake. You mess up the cake. It's going to be a long marriage. Okay. I said, hey, all right, I got to figure out the cake. And I said, babe, we were, at, we were at a wedding. I go, is the cake, what do you think about the cake? She goes, I already got my cake. I go, you already got your cake? What, what are you talking about? She goes, yeah, it's on my Pinterest page. I said, what's Pinterest? She said, you don't know what Pinterest is? She said, yeah, go to my page. And on her page, she had a segment called My Dream Wedding, and she had 242 photos there. And I thought to myself, this would have been really helpful two years ago. <laughs> Nevertheless, June 7th, 2013, I get down on one knee. I say, Amanda, will you marry me? She says, yes. I said, just kidding. Will you marry me today? We open up a lounge room door, and about 85 of our family and friends were standing in there with the sign that says, today, we rolled in a dress. A hairstylist, makeup artist, everything that you would need to get engaged and married on the same day. Um, I get to share this story all around the world and just talk to people about getting outside of their comfort zone and taking a risk, you know, because that, that can be very difficult. And it's afforded me the opportunity to work with some amazing companies, some amazing professional sports teams. And, and here's, here's what I've learned about the people who perform at the highest level. Here's what I've learned from people who get the most out of life, the people that maximize their potential. They're really good at leading themselves. They're, they're the NBA players that I work with. They're, they're not waiting for a coach to tell them to work harder. No, they've already made up their mind, okay, this is what I'm going to do to be ready so that a coach can utilize me as best as I possibly can. And so sometimes we can be waiting for someone else to come along and develop us when the tools are already readily available for us to develop ourselves, especially when no one else is around. Because essentially, this is what you have to answer today. If you don't own your development, who will? Who's sitting around going, man, I really hope Barry gets this stuff together. I mean, uh, who, like, who, who's doing that? Like, no, no, like it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's on, it's on you. So, so what I want to do in our time together is I want us to look at seven questions to own your own development. Seven questions. These are the questions I think you should be asking yourself on a consistent basis. And if you are consistently asking these questions, what's going to happen? is you're going to be a better leader. So the first question is this, and it's vitally important. What's it like to be on the other side of me? What is it like to be on the other side of me? This is the self-awareness question. Have you ever considered what it is like to be across the room from you? Have you ever considered what it is like to be across the Zoom from you? Have you ever considered what it's like to be married to you? What it's like to be parented by you? What it's like to be, be led with you? Like to work with you? Like some of us, we just go, it's awesome. Are you sure? <laughs> I mean, so, so we, we, just, we just don't know. And, and here's the deal. Whenever we start talking about self-awareness, well, the truth is, is we all work with at least one person that isn't self-aware. Whenever we start talking about self-awareness, we're always hoping somebody else is in the room. We're like, man, if only Susie was here right now to hear this message, this would be great. 
But here's what happens. How do you know that you're not the person that someone else was just thinking of right now? (laughs) Inevitably, here's the the irony of self-awareness. Even the person that thinks they're the most self-aware makes them not (laughs) self-aware. Think about that for a second. It's, it's, we should all err on the side of going, you know what? I want to, when I think about what it's like to be on the other side of me, I, I just want to be considerate because it may not be as enjoyable as I think it is. And so it, it's good for us to just step back and go, man, let me, let me just think about what's it, what's it like to be on a reply all from me? What's it like to be stuck in a group chat with me? What's it like? To be on the other side of me. Here's what I know about self-aware people. Self-aware people, they know their strengths. They know what they're good at. There's nothing worse than working with somebody that thinks they're good at something that they're not. The only reason they think that they're good at it is because their mom told them that and they were lied to their whole life and somehow they, 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 they weaseled their way into the position and now they think they're a good leader but they're not a good leader. But like, like a person that really knows their strengths, uh, they also know their weaknesses. They have enough security to raise their hands to say, man, I'm not, I'm not really good at this stuff, okay? I'm not really good at, at verbal communication. I'm not very good at written communication. Administrative duties isn't my jam. Or, or le- like they understand what they're not good at. And whenever you get these two confused, that's how you end up on American Idol on the blooper reels, okay? So, because you, you, they can't figure out what they're, what they're good at, okay? They're good in the shower in their mind, but as soon as they leave their house, it's terrible for the world. Now, uh, the other thing that they understand is their impact on others. Because we all have at least one person, dare I say, family member. This happens every Thanksgiving. There's just that one uncle, that one aunt who has no filter and they just say whatever is on their mind and they could care less about the impact on other people. They're passive aggressive. They just, they're not even thinking about it. They're just, I'm just going to be me and do me and you do you boo boo and I'm going to do me. Like they just have this thing about them. They're just not considerate as what it's like to share a meal with them. So if you want to take your leadership to the next level, you have to be asking yourself this question. What's it like to be on the other side of me? It would be helpful if you asked somebody else to verify. (laughs) Because if you're always answering your own question, then that's a problem. But but at least you're, you're on a good start to go, man, when I walk into a room, when I enter into a Zoom, let me just go, let me just pause just for a moment to go, man, I... Am I, am I hard to follow? I got a very fast-paced life. And sometimes the people I work with, I realize, man, I, I, have to, I have to slow down. And I didn't realize how fast-paced my life was until people started traveling with me. And they're like, how do you know where everything is in the airport? I'm so confused. And you're just moving so fast. And I'm like, keep up, dude. What is wrong with you? They're, just like, they're like, no, you're not normal, okay? And I am normal. I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> At one time, I, I was traveling with my son. And he started pulling on my coat. He said, Daddy, can you please slow down? And that was when I realized, what's it like to be around me? Exhausting. (laughs) So he doesn't have to. There's certain things he doesn't have to say. Um, I was was on my laptop at home. And my son was just, he was just kind of like buzzing around me. Just kind of like a bee. Like he was just, just doing just things. Okay, just now... I didn't say anything, and I thought, Ryan, don't yell at him. Don't just, like, just let him be. But then about seven minutes later, he goes, hey, Dad, I'm just going to go over here on the couch. And I said, why? He goes, because you, and this is all he did. He doesn't have the adult verbiage to tell me anything. He goes, you just, I, I just feel like I'm annoying you. But I'm like, I didn't say anything. He goes, but you... What was it like to be around me at that point? Busy, not very fun, not very engaging. And so I just have to learn to close my laptop when I get home. Because I'm constantly thinking in work and in life, what's it like to be around me? Now, here's the second question that is beautiful. Now, where do I want to go? Where where do I want to go? This is the vision question. A a, a lot of people, they, they just don't. They're waiting for someone else to cast a vision for their life. But did you know, like, you could actually make some decisions about, well, what do I actually want my, 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 my life 
to look like it? And what's the impact I actually want to have on people, on communities? I mean, like every single one of us, uh, we understand uh, brand management. We understand that there are brands that stick out in our minds. When I, think, when I say Chick-fil-A or McDonald's, you, things pop in your mind. But guess what? Each and every one of us has a personal brand. Did you know that? Like your personal brand, um, it's the story other people tell about you when you're not in the room or the Zoom. That's your personal brand. There is a story about you that is happening when you're not in the room. Do you know what it is? Now, guess what else it is? It, it, it's, it's not just the story they tell. It's the feeling that they get when you walk in the room. Uh, every single one of us has somebody on uh, our phone that when they call us, we get a certain feeling as soon as they call, right? And then you, you look at your phone, you're like, oh, man, you know, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Like somebody the other day said, I wish caller ID also gave us the reason that they're calling. That would be awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you calling me? Ah. Is that you? One time I was calling my friend and I could see him. He didn't know I was there. And I was calling. I saw him pick up the phone and he goes, I go, bruh, you got five seconds. And he goes, hey, Ryan, what's up? I said, I'm watching you, bro. I'm like, I better not be that person on their contact list. But guess what? All of us have, have a thing, right? Because here's the deal. Before you can have a vision for your chapter, you want to have a vision for yourself. You want to have a vision for you. You want to have a vision for your home. You want to have a, a vision for your family. Where do you want to go in life? Have you ever, some people think that they're stuck, that they don't got options, that this is just the way that I grew up and, and they feel caged by their upbringing. And so they're constantly taking cues from the rearview mirror instead of knowing that they have a future, instead of knowing that they have a destiny and that their life can change. One of my favorite lines is from Jim Rohn. He says, uh, if you don't like where you are, move. You are not a tree. And I just thought about that. Most people just think, I'm a tree. Can't go nowhere. I'm just stuck. I'm, I am. just am. I'm just planet. No, you can move if you want to. Uh, this is the personal brand exercise that I often do uh, with executives, and, and I want to take you through it really quick. So, it, so here's what we do. I sit down and I say, hey, uh, let's just figure out this vision about where you want to go. All right, let's just start with where you are. Okay, so what's one word others would use to describe you? Hey, hey you just you pick your word. What's one word you think others would use to describe you? You could ask them, but in case, you know, hey, I, I'd like to say there are no bad words, but obviously we know there are bad words. <laughs> Nevertheless... Their words are their words, okay? Those are the words that other people would use to describe you. Now, here's what's important. Now, what's one word you would use to describe you? Like, if you're describing yourself, if you came on the stage today and said, hey, my name is Ryan, and I get to describe myself in one word, what would it be? I'll never forget the first time I did this exercise, okay? It was with a CMO for a professional sports team. Okay, I said, hey, so... Hey, uh, I know you're having some trouble with your team. All right, so uh, look, what, what's one word you think your team would use to describe you? This is what she said. She said, blunt or direct. I said, okay, that's, those are words. Okay, that's cool. Blunt or direct. Ain't nothing wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with being blunt or direct. Um, but, but what's one word you would use to describe you? She goes, fun. I said, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know the gap between direct, blunt, and fun? Like, how did we, where, what are we doing? Because, now, now this, is the, this is the most important part of the exercise. Well, what's one word you would like others to use to describe?